Okay. So, um, welcome everybody. Uh, we're going to have a uh, video discussion, and we have uh, today uh, uh, two fantastic uh, speakers. Um, we have from from Australia, um, and uh, currently located in the USA, but from Australia, Senator Fraser Anning, and uh, from coming all the way from Tokyo, Japan, uh, Professor Ken Moggi. Uh, he is a professor in Tokyo, and also he's a, uh, one of the directors of Sony Computer Science Lab, and he's written many books, and uh, he also invented some concepts of poly uh, of, of the brain. Uh, Senator Frey Zanning uh, was, in, was uh, in the Australian Senate and uh, had um, many, um, many fantastic policies. Um, and so today we're gonna have a, uh, a video discussion uh, I'm currently in Babinda, Queensland, where uh, uh, Senator Tanning was uh, running this hotel, which I'm in now in the, in the 80s and 90s, and uh, I'm staying here with his brother, Harry. Um, so actually, uh, I'll let uh, Professor Ken Moggy go first, because he, he had his uh, question immediately. So uh, why don't you go, Professor Moggy, here? Yeah, I, mean, I just, you know, I just would like to learn a lot from you people, uh, you know, because I, you know, I always uh, am very uh, fascinated to meet with people and uh, understand the person in depth. Uh, so Adrian, I have the privilege to have known you for so many years, but uh, it is the first time for me to meet Senator Anning. So, you know, I really would like to understand him in, in person. I mean, deeply, yes. you know, some people just do it on the superficial level and discuss it at that level, but I do feel that I really need to know you better uh, in depth in order to really understand what your you know, wishes are and what your aspirations are and so on. So, so uh, since I, mean, I, I did listen to your maiden speech, which I understood, uh, I understand uh, made a lot of splash in Australia and beyond. Mm -hmm. And I should say, I, I, you know, uh, I do not actually agree with uh, everything that you've said. I mean, not, not everything. I, I, I do respect your, your, for example, the fact that you come from the bush, yeah. you say, and you had this experience with farmland and you talked about the nation building. And so that part I really do understand. And, but you know, this uh, final solution thing um, that you did uh, mention in your speech was uh, probably uh, taken out of context, maybe according to your viewpoint, because you did mention these words, but for me, listening to the talk, it didn't sound uh, directly referring to uh, this history in Germany. Yeah, so absolutely. what is your feeling? Did you feel that it, that phrase was taken out of context somehow or? Uh, <coughs> uh, yes, Ken, uh, absolutely. It was taken out of context. It was never intended to uh, refer back to the final solution uh, as uh, the Holocaust was referred to, but um, uh, it, you know, after the the morning after I uh, that maiden speech, a friend of mine who's um, head of the Jewish Association in Australia uh, called me and said, "It's ridiculous. I've I've deliberately taken it out of context." Uh, and he said, "I have three magazines here with uh, the you know people referring to the final solution in in other contexts." Um, so then we did the research uh, in uh, what, what is called Hansard, uh, which is the recording of all speeches made in, in the Senate or in our lower house. And over the 10-year period prior to that speech, 21 different politicians used those two words in different contexts, none of them referring to the Holocaust. One of them happened to be one of our prime ministers, uh, Mr. Bill McMahon. So... <clears throat> It, it was a very smart or a very nasty uh, left-wing journalist who decided he would pick those two words out and highlight them. And then instantly the rest of the fake media in Australia picked up on it and, uh, you know, accused me of being, uh, uh, you know, anti-Semitic and all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, the fact is that the only senator in, that, in, in our Senate who has ever stood up for, the Israel, uh, for Israel and the, and the Israeli people uh, was myself. Um, I, at one stage, one of my, um, a, a bill I got through 
was to stop funding. Australia was sending money to the Palestinian Authority, uh, which uh, pays people who slay Israelis. Um, they, they pay them a, a stipend when they're in jail, you know. So if you go over there and murder some innocent people from Palestine, to, you know, the Palestinians, and they murder some Israelis, um, then they get paid from this fund by the Palestinian Authority, which then was $410 million a year we were supplying them with some of that money and Australia, the Australian taxpayer. So I highlighted the fact and instantly the um, Australian government decided not to send it to them. So, uh, so Senator Arning, uh, did you write the speech yourself? Uh, myself and a speech writer, you know, I, I'm not a... Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just curious, you know, uh, because you, you, were, you were referring to the immigration program. Sure. And in that particular connotation, uh, probably it would it might appear to some you know people uh, yeah. that uh, this word final solution might be associated with that particular uh, time in German history. So oh. did it did this uh, possibility come across your mind at all before you it, made this? Made this it did, uh, and you know, uh, Ken, I, I had um, you know I read a lot of books when I was very young. I, I was a great. I just read all the time. Yeah. And one of them was Treblinka, um, the, you know, the death camps. <clears throat> and it uh, was so repulsive. So the last thing I would have uh, been speaking about would have uh, been anything to do with, uh, you know, the Holocaust uh, or, or backing the Holocaust. Um, so, yeah, it was. And I'd read, you know, I mean, obviously I read through the speech several times yeah. before I, I had to stand up there and make the thing. And, I, and I've never been... Uh, I was never trained as a public speaker, you know, coming off the cattle station, you're sitting on a horse half your life and, uh, you know, the other half you're in a cattle yard doing, uh, working with cattle. So um, it's, it's not something that uh, was, would, is natural for me. So, um, but yeah, I mean, if, it, and my wife had read it several times, somebody would have, none of us even had the slightest uh, thought that it may have been taken out of context. So, and, and look, what I was saying was, yes, I think that Australia has to do something about our immigration program is, is really wrong. You know, I mean, the people we're bringing into the country, a lot of them hate our country, they burn our flag, they attack our, our, our citizens on the street uh, because, you know, Islam and, and our culture is diametrically opposed. So, uh, uh, so you did say that uh, the immigration program should be decided by the Australian people, yeah, uh, you absolutely. know, by the popular opinion. So what, how do you feel, how would you feel if uh, the Australian people do decide that we, maybe they should uh, bring more immigration uh, from countries, including those countries who, you know, um, you know, subscribe to the Islamic religion. If, you know, if, I'm just saying that if the Australian people decide in the direction that might not be, uh, you know, uh, preferable for you. What would you say I, then in that case? Well, I'd say, um, one, the vote had been rigged because uh -huh. I, 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 I'm... Um, oh, okay. I've, I've worked in a lot of different industries, you know, in the, in the cattle industry, in construction, in hospitality, and I, I've mixed with a lot of people and I speak to a lot of people uh, I was over there speaking with a lot of people on a daily basis. I, I absolutely guarantee if, if the vote was less than 75% to stop Muslim Im immigration to Australia, I'd be stunned <clears throat> because people don't, uh, people don't want that sort of stuff. If you go to Western Sydney or into Melbourne and places like that, there are, there are a lot of places you can't even go into anymore as Australians. And that's not the way Australia was. We used to, you could walk anywhere pretty much. I mean, there were some rough areas where you'd be, you know, you, you might be in trouble with somebody uh, holding you up or something, you know, so, some really bad areas, but really not many. Now there, there's, there's uh, great swaths of the city that are pretty much no-go areas. I see. Uh, so, Adrian, uh, you know, uh, I have a question for you too. Yeah. You know, I, I can understand that uh, Senator Arning is yearning for an era where Australia was a particular type of country. I mean, you know, as Senator Arning mentioned, uh, I think uh, Senator Arning also mentioned in his maiden speech uh, when the Australian economy was going well and you could buy a decent uh, house earning decent 
uh, living uh, through your diligent work. I, I understand that point. And, but uh, so Adrian, uh, you, you, I understand you come from a Chinese Greek origin. Your father yes. was a Greek, was My father was, uh, my mother was Greek and my father was Malaysian Chinese. Oh, okay, okay. So, so given that the uh, background, uh, you know, but you do, uh, you know, agree with uh, this one nation, no, not one nation, this party um, that you ran from, what was the party? Yeah. National, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. National party. So, you know, so, but so Adrian, you, you do agree with uh, what uh, Senator Arning says, uh, despite the fact that you come from a much ethnic background, so. Yes. Yeah, I, I, um, as a friend, I was always one. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fantastic question. Uh, you know, um, I, I, although Senator Anning uh, does uh, deny that, uh, Senator Anning's views have been uh, classified as by some people as a kind of a going back to the white Australia policy, which uh, is not the case according to Senator Anning. But anyway, it was, so Adrian, uh, you 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 have a Greek father, no Greek mother, and a Chinese Malay, Malaysian Chinese uh, father father. So coming from that uh, multi-ethnic background, um, how how do you position in yourself in Australian politics? I mean, you know, I'm just curious as a friend, and you know, That's a, yeah, it's a great question. Thank you. Um, so as you mentioned, I I, I, I was uh, my mother is from born in Greece, and my father was born in Malaysia. She's Malaysian Chinese, and um, I was born in uh, Adelaide, uh, South Australia. Um, which um, uh, it, um, I should say is uh, quite a left-wing uh, city and also <laughs> quite left-wing state as well. Um, yeah. So um, I think uh, that um, I think that I, I, I sincerely I, I got asked this many times during the election campaign. Uh, similar question. They 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 would say, uh, you know, how could you be um, uh, running uh, for Senator Fraser Anning's party uh, because of you, you, you know, you have a, uh, you know, ethnic background, Greek and uh, Chinese. And, uh, you know, so I would get asked this question many times, maybe not in, in such a polite way as you asked. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, you get a lot of rude people when you're campaigning. But um, I answered then and, and, and my answer is, uh, uh, basically is the same now that um, I, I sincerely think uh, Senator Anning is, is not racist and uh, he also will say the same that he's not racist. It, it, it is not so much about the uh, race of the people that he's concerned about. Um, it is to do with the uh, uh, culture uh, of the uh, Islam, uh, which uh, he believes is, uh, and, and I also agree is uh, quite incompatible uh, with the uh, Australian, you know, Western sole democracy uh, that we have. And maybe I had a bit of a, a first-hand view, you know, before I, before I ran for the uh, lower house parliament in Australia for Senate Anning, uh, I lived in Malaysia for uh, about five, five years or so. And uh, of course, you know, they say when in Rome, you got to do as the Romans do. So, you know, you, Malaysia was my uh, host country. And honestly speaking, you know, it, 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 it is a, a very nice country to, to visit and to stay in and the people are friendly. But, you know, you have to see that uh, uh, the way that they think uh, is it's like either their way or no way, you know. So, uh, for example, uh, I... Uh, in, I, had, I had a research laboratory, maybe we had about 50 researchers. And um, so uh, you have to do everything the Muslim way, uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, like you have to have uh, halal, only halal food in the laboratory, even though about half of the laboratory were, were foreigners, right, from other countries, from Europe, America, etc. You have to, You have to be halal. Uh, you know, you can't even bring you know, they had this kind of really weird thing, like if you even bring some non-halal food, they have to have a whole ceremony of, uh, I don't know what they do, they bring sand in the 
and they have this big ceremony it goes on for two days to clean cleanse the <laughs> the office then uh so uh, uh I, I remember when i hired one young well girl she was very young as a as a as a kind of a administration assistant she was the only one out of about you know 25 women uh, who didn't wear the hijab and uh she left within two weeks and and uh i i, I didn't understand why at first but then everyone told me because you know the the the, the people the, the, all the research and the staff know what's going on. And they said, oh, she was just basically harassed. If you don't wear, wear a hijab, don't work here. And of course, that was not my policy because I'm a, uh, not Muslim, I'm Australian. So of course, I didn't set the policy. But they policed themselves. Uh, and and there's just so many examples where, okay, it's fine in Malaysia because that is a, their country, that is a Muslim country. We, in, in Rome, you do as the Romans do. But it, it is... It is uh, it, it, it goes against the grain uh, of, of Western, uh, you know, lib liberalism, uh, free speech. Uh, so, in fact, uh, uh, when Muslims become the majority, it's either their way or no way, you know, and, and that, that, that is why I think, uh, uh, why I, I believe that, uh, uh, you know, uh, Australia, which, which has a very small population, 20 million people, uh, really has to take care to maintain the, uh, uh, you know, liberalism, free speech uh, that is there. And, and uh, it's unfortunate, I think the, the way the uh, Islamic culture is set up, it, it, it is a kind of winner takes all uh, uh, situation. You know, you either wear the hijab or, or, or you're, you know, or not, you know, there's no way, there's no, there's no second opinion. Uh, and, uh, uh, and you know when 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 it when when the more let's say hardline Muslims take over, there's one state in Malaysia in the north which has the Sharia law, and they're literally still. They're, I mean, this is incredible. In the 21st century, they're literally stoning people, stoning like if a woman has a, a, a adultery or or has a, 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 you know re, relations before marriage, sexual relations before marriage, they can literally stone her, and they still stoning people in the 21st century. I wasn't staying in that state. I was staying in Johor, which was much more, uh, uh, let's say, uh, modern. Uh, but, you know, there, even in Malaysia, there's a certain state which has the Sharia law, and you can see what happens if the, let's say, more hardline uh, Islamists take over. You, 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 have, you have no chance. You have no, no, no voice. And I think that is the... Uh, so I don't think... Uh, I don't think that... I don't think that, you know, uh, what Senator Anning is saying is about the, the race. It's not about racism, so to speak. It's more about the uh, culture, uh, which not necessarily to do with the race. For example, there, is, there are Western people who are Muslim, right? There are some Australians who convert to Islam, right? So it's not so much about their uh, actual genetic race. It's about the culture. It's what I think. I'm not sure. Very if good. Good. Okay, so that's uh, really interesting to here and I also learned something about your personal experience so that is very valuable for me as your friend and so Senator Anning, uh, I heard your maiden speech and also read you some of your interviews and it appears to me that you are a libertarian uh, uh, which I mean, libertarian of which I by of which I mean that absolutely uh, you, you want the role of the government to be a minimum and you want people to be free to mm -hmm. pursue his or her own enterprise. And so I, I, I understood that point. Also, you were very earnest about nation building for Australia, irrigation and, you know, farmland and so on. So, you know, I feel that it is probably a problem of presentation. I mean, I understand that you, uh, you know, uh, are very enthusiastic about people having a free spirit and do, doing something uh, on his or her own initiative. So I, I think if you, have, if you have said that, uh, you know, in that way, uh, not without referring to uh, alternative ways of living, uh, Islam included, maybe you could have made your case more uh, in a friendly manner, yeah, you know what I mean. So, so uh, yeah, I understand. Uh, 
I am a bit confrontational, I guess, <clears throat> but um, I see the three biggest threats to our nation and also now to America, are, uh, you know, China, uh, uh, Islam and socialism. Uh, those three things are, are and not in necessarily in that order. Islam is insidious. Um, of the 42 uh, Christian, Hindu, Jewish countries that accepted Islam in their their now Islamic nations, and the only thing that's happening to those uh, Jews and and to the to the Hindus and to the Christians, uh, they're being slaughtered by uh, the people that they invited in. Now that's that's been the history of Islam since uh, Muhammad uh, went from. Uh, Mecca to um, Medina and um, you know he, he did he was taken in by those Jewish people and, and taken care of and uh, when he got his enough following he, he plagiarized the Bible obviously and the Torah to, to write his ridiculous book the Quran uh, when he had enough uh, support he slaughtered the people who'd, who'd uh, taken him in so he's a treacherous murdering per person and uh, <clears throat> of course all, all Muslims are expected to uh, to um, be uh, like that man. So uh, I, I see that as a, a threat. It's, it's like a cancer. They will, uh, they outbreed us by, you know, six or seven to one, you know, sometimes um, the idea is that, you know, they, they have a long, a long game, you know, they, they're looking at a hundred years, 200 years, and they eventually have enough uh, uh, representation in uh, politics, for instance, uh, that they they end up with um, plays with their Sharia law in areas, that's that's a definite threat to Australia long term. A short term threat, of course, is is China. China's you know uh, doing a lot. To, probably nearly twenty percent of the farmland and agricultural land in Australia now is owned by Chinese and backed by the Chinese Communist the, the Communist Party. They own the the port of Darwin, which is one of our most strategic ports. Um, so that's a worry for, for us in Australia, and uh, um, you know, and of course, socialism is is insidious as well. And uh, unfortunately, democracy only lasts, you know, maybe two hundred years, uh, and and then eventually, when people realise that they can vote for a for a living rather than work for a living, uh, they take the easy road, like we've just seen in in America here. Although I believe that there was a massive amount of fraud in the in the electoral system, but um, uh, you know, I mean, somebody stands on a soapbox and says, "I'm going to give you free medicine, I'll give you free education, I'll give you a house, I'll give you," then people are dumb enough. Unfortunately, they haven't read enough history and they they vote that way. So, um, and yeah, I do believe in individual rights. I don't believe that we should be a slave to to the uh, to a to a government or to um, to the rest of society. We should all be individuals, make your money and and uh, do your work and live happily. So, uh, Sir Danning, uh, you are a Christian, right? Absolutely, yeah. You are a Christian, but you do not go to church so often. No, no, I'm, I am. I'm, not, I, I'm not a good Christian. <laughs> okay, so you are, should I say, a, a secular Christian. So do you think it is possible for some Islamic people to be secular in the same way? I mean, you know, uh, I am... Secular, yeah, not really adhering to the teachings uh, in a strict manner. I mean, do you think it's possible? Uh, I'm sure it's possible. <clears throat> and people said to me, what about, uh, you know, when I was interviewed different times, what about all uh, the good Muslims? And I said, well, okay, we know that we, we can all identify the bad ones. They're the ones who blow up the subway and kill innocent people going to work, doing their jobs, um, driving over them in the, in the streets in, in south of France. Or, or flying aeroplanes into building, killing 3,000, nearly 3,000 people who are merely going to work to do their job. We, we can identify them as the bad ones. But what, what interests me is that when you see films of all the different uh, cities are, around the Muslim cities and two and 300,000 people out there cheering every time they see the, the aeroplane hit the building again, which actually happened in a, in a university in Australia, uh, you know, a group of the Muslim students uh, they're in a room and they, they just kept playing the, the thing over again and cheering each time it happened. Now, if the bad ones are the ones flying the planes into the building, are the good ones the ones who are cheering that they did it? Uh, really, they're, they're there, as far as I'm concerned, a lot of them were the cheer squad. And 
you know, they, you know, they, they are. I, I'm not. I don't believe that they're great people. You know, and I'm sure there's some there that um, are very, very moderate and uh, maybe don't adhere as strongly, and they're not as uh, they're not radicalized. But there's a lot of them out there that, uh, um, you know, who believe that the infidel is, you know, the able to be slaughtered, and uh, you know, the the surahs tell us that. Um, 8.12 says, you know, uh, terrorize and behead anyone who reads scriptures other than the Quran. Well, that's me, and I'm, I'm sure that's a lot of the infidels. <laughs> so, um, I see. Um, you know, so I, I'm really, you know, uh, I do feel that um, you really believe in human freedom, right? And individual, um, you know, dignity. And I, I can take that. And so when when you know this incident happened, this egg boy, you know, uh, this chap <laughs> hit hit you with an egg. Uh, how did you feel? I mean, I know you kind of hit, hit back. <laughs> that was captured on video. But uh, that boy, I, I think, was a good Australian boy, except for that uh, action. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do you feel about the egg boy now? I mean, he was free. Uh, he, he was. He yeah, <laughs> he was a kid that um, maybe his mum and dad didn't give enough smacks to, you know. And he, uh, he, he, I think he. A lot of people were um, that they were convinced by the media that uh, you know that that uh, what I what I believed in was wrong, um, and that's fine, you know. If, if I, I know that you're never going to please everyone, uh, you know. He he was that was over a thing. <clears throat> Uh, in the Christchurch mo uh, mosque shooting, okay, again, yeah. they yes. took me out of context a little bit. I said, you know, this I, I, I condemned the man who did it as, as a, a fool and a, 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 a lunatic who would do something like that. However, all I said then was that, you know, we, we're bringing some of these problems into our own country. Not only um, him doing that, but then you know, Muslims uh, attacking people in subways, stabbing them, and all that sort of stuff. So you know, we've brought a problem into the country that we didn't have before by bringing uh, you know some of these people from from uh, cultures like South Sudan and places where um, the second most uh, violent country on earth, bringing those people into the probably one of the most peaceful countries on earth. Uh, it never, it's never going to work. All we are is lambs to the slaughter so i said we've brought a lot of this on ourselves well of course the media then said anning blamed the victims for the for the problem well which was out of context again so this is what got this kid um stirred up you know i mean if, it, if he'd thought about it uh, his reaction was attacking me for for a view like the moron who killed all those people in the mosque his reaction to islam was to attack them so um uh, and and when I hit that kid, you know, I had a I had a bright light in my eyes from the TV camera that was behind him, who was who were involved, by the way. The the guy, the Channel Seven TV uh, cameraman, was part of that. He uh, whether he set it up or I'm not sure, but he was definitely he knew what was going to happen because he followed the boy in and he stood behind the boy, which was behind me. Uh, the other TV cameras, when I was talking to the reporters, were in front of me, obviously. And so this guy filmed the whole thing. And when I turned around, all I had was a bright light and somebody right in my face. So I just uh, hit him. And when I realized, and by the way, you know, I mean, I've been in a lot of hotels and a lot of rough bars and stuff like that I've run. So, um, you know, I usually just use an open hand if I, if I don't think the threat is something that's going to kill me I, so he, he just got an open hand over the face. Okay. So I, I'm just wondering, you know, uh, the egg boy, uh, this boy. Yeah. It, well, apart from the fact that he, in, according to your view, misunderstood you, would you say that he was a good Australian boy uh, in time, uh, on, in that he acted on his own initiative and he thought he, what he was doing was right. So could you be friends with him? If, oh, you know, absolutely. I, I, I held no animosity towards okay. this. Kid. You know, the kid thought he was doing what he thought was right and uh, he acted on it. You know, it was a bit uh, coming up from behind, but 
you know, you probably wouldn't get me from in front. So, so you have to come from behind. So uh, no, I, I uh, and, and I said that, you know, the police came and interviewed me because yeah. um, Mr. Morrison, our third rate prime minister is, is uh, pretty much left. Our, our only conservative party was the Liberal Party. We have two parties, two major parties, Liberal and Labor. Labor yeah. being the left wing party and Liberal uh, um, being the Conservative, used to be the Conservative Party. And of course, it's been infiltrated by a lot of left wing people and they've, they've moved the Liberal Party even nearly, nearly as far left as the Labor Party. So, and Morrison's no, uh, you know, he's, he's a good example of that. He's, he's of the left leaning side of the, the Conservative Party. And, uh, you know, he said, I should be prosecuted for being attacked. Uh, so, and so they sent the Victoria police up to interview me and uh, in Brisbane and, and, you know, they didn't, they didn't file any charges against me, but, but uh, Morrison said his words were he should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Uh, so, you know, that, that was his view. He, he got hit by an egg several months later. And uh, I, I don't know what happened to the young lady who threw that at him. So uh, I, this is a question for both of you, actually. Uh, I know Adrian, uh, you are a very intelligent, accomplished scholar, and you were made into a member of Australia. Are you still a member of Australia? Because some people try to strip that out of you, but you are still a member of Australia. Right? And uh, uh, Senator Anning, uh, I know uh, you to be a person who is motivated by good intentions. Uh, because you do believe that uh, Australia is a country where individual initiatives uh, should, uh, you know, take hold. And, but having said that, uh, you know, some of your followers might misinterpret what you say and take it further. Because uh, when I watched your the video about I know Egg Boy incident, you know, you hit back, and that was a, you know instant reaction. I can understand that as a human. But yes, mm -hmm. followers, I mean, the people who supported you pushed down the boy really hard. And, you know, uh, for me, that was too much, too aggressive, uh, you know, uh, for me. Uh, for it was, I yeah, agree. It, it, was, it was an overreaction. I, uh, yeah. So, Senator Anning, uh, I know you to be a uh, man of good intentions, but do you feel there's a danger uh, when you say these things? that some people who might not be as, you know, integrated as you uh, to take it further and do something really, you know, extreme. Have you ever considered the impact that you might, your words might have on these people? And the uh, same question to you, Adrian, actually. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Okay, I'll Have you considered uh, the impact of your words? I'll go first then. Um, so, yeah, doing, yeah. yeah, sure, sure. So, uh, yes, I experienced the kind of rust, rust of um, people uh, when I, just after the election, actually, uh, there was the Queen's birthday, I think it was June 20th, raised, I think, June 20th or so. Um, and I was, you know, awarded the uh, member of, of the Order of Australia, which is uh, uh, one of the highest uh, civilian awards in Australia. And... Um, I think within a few hours, someone from a very local paper in Adelaide, Australia, uh, sent me an email saying, do you denounce, now that you're a member of the Order of Australia, do you denounce uh, Senator Fraser Anning? And do you uh, regret joining the Senator Fraser Anning Conservative National Party? And I've just replied, uh, no. I just, you know, I, I thought, I know, I, know where this, I know this is where this is going to go. So... I just replied, no, uh, I do not regret and I do not renounce. Uh, so because they didn't get what they want, and actually this is very similar to the USSR or, or maybe China now, you know, they say, uh, do you regret uh, doing this or doing that if you don't say what they want? Uh, so within a few hours, all the uh, media were, were onto this, you know, in Australia, ABC TV, which is like the, NHK in Japan, uh, SBS, which is the government channel, uh, and then some of the commercial media, Channel 7. Uh, then even The Guardian jumped in. You know, the Guardian is a very, very, very left-wing paper from uh, England. 
uh, and uh, it, it just totally blew up. And, and the headlines were, you know, uh, right wing fascist. Uh, and then also, they, I've done 25 years of research in all types of areas, you know, augmented reality, robotics, and everything. Like you, Professor Moggy, a lot of research. But they just found the one thing for the headline, you know, he's a sex robot, uh, a sex robot advocate, right? And I wrote a few papers I, about I the... I do enjoy that part. By the way, I do enjoy that part, Adrian. Yeah. You are a sex bo robot professor. <laughs> so... <laughs> What I'm saying is, is you can write, you can write through, you know, I think I've written 500 papers or 400, and they just choose one or two of those papers on the sex robot. So the headline is right wing fascist sex robot. I mean, it's just the weirdest headline ever, right? And then, and then it, that, it just blew up, you know, all around the world. And then all these, and you know, the, as, as Moggy san you will know, academia is extremely left wing. So then all the universities in Australia, they made some petition, uh, uh, wanting, they made a petition to the governor general, who's the uh, head of, of Australia, he's the representative of the queen. And they said, you must renounce his order of Australia, that it was official petition. So I didn't know what to do, because at that stage, it, it totally gone out of control. And I called, uh, I called Senator Anning and, and, I, and I told him what was going on. And he saved my Order of Australia, and this is how he did it. He wrote a letter to the Queen, because senators have a, uh, a direct, it's actually a very interesting story. Senators have a direct, like, kind of box. They can send letters to the Queen directly, right? Uh, yeah. Which, yeah, which is really, really, really cool, right? Yeah. I'd love, I love to do that. But anyway, so Senator Anning wrote a letter, you know, red, 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 red hotline letter to the Queen, and, and a very eloquent argument saying, if you take away this award because of his political views, then in the future, everyone's going to go through it. all of the people's awards. Like, okay, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. You know, uh, and, and you're going to be, end up renouncing half of the awards because of people's uh, 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 views, right? Uh, so my award was safe. But since then, there's been two years, right? And I've seen in the newspaper, they always find someone every year to say, oh, this, 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 uh, uh, like this year was the famous tennis star. I, I can't remember the name, maybe. Uh, Margaret Court. Yes, she was the grand champion for, I think, the most successful woman tennis player ever. They gave her a, a, a companion of Order of Australia. There was outrage on all of the newspapers because she is a, quite a conservative Christian and they say, oh, you know, she's anti gay and I don't know what this, that, the other. Uh, and, and you can see, Every time there's an order of Australia, they will find something. They'll find someone to 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 attack. You know, the the left wing is kind of like a like a mob, like a real mob. And I was the one two years ago. By the way, still every time they have this story every year, <laughs> they this year was Margaret Court, and they and they go, oh, by the way, in 2019, the sex robot fascist also got it. And right, so this I don't know how long this story is going to go on and on and on forever, right? Uh, <laughs> so, but. Uh, this is the point. It's it's really like a actual mob. It's it's like uh, yeah. uh, in China in the, in the the Cultural Revolution, right? And they attacked all the academics first. Uh, yeah. They killed killed the professors first, right? So it it really is like that. They have this mob mentality. And and what I think is very horrifying is that you know left left let let's say like more socialist or left the uh, Views used to be maybe I mean maybe only theoretically, but used to be that also free speech. That's gone now because they have this whole thing about can cancel, cancel cancel culture, which I want to talk about later, with related to Trump, the cancel culture. But I experienced that, you know, firsthand. They wanted to cancel uh, Adrian Chiok, you know. So anyway, I'll let uh, Senator Tanning reply as well. <laughs> yes, so Senator Tanning, uh, yeah, please. <coughs> The uh, yeah, what am I replying to? That's right. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, uh, what I was saying that uh, even if your what you say is based on good intentions, mm -hmm. uh, if people just take the words, uh, that might be misinterpreted by those people who do not think so deeply as you. Mm -hmm. So, don't you think? Do you think there's a danger of your words misinterpreted and some people taking extreme actions? based on these words, 
Um, I don't, well, I don't believe so. I, all I ever said was what, one, what I believe. Um, I, I, was a, I was a big fan of Ayn Rand uh, and I believe in, you know, uh, small government, uh, individual rights, uh, the people should run government. I, I love the American constitution. I think it was the best uh, constitution written in history. Well, it was the first constitution it was actually put to paper in history. But, um, and, and working with all the people I work with, uh, my, my father was uh, very well read and he was conservative. None of us, uh, you know, I, I, my, my words were never designed to incite uh, violence to anyone and, and, I've, and I've always been that way I mean uh, I'll always defend myself but I've never I hope I've never initiated any violence and I didn't want to initiate any violence uh, anyone else or, or uh, promote violence to anyone else um, but I you know I have very strong views about um, keeping a Christian conservative country like Australia started out um, the way it was, and, and I know that's that's sort of uh, everything has to change. But uh, the the type of changes were were that were being brought on on us by conservative governments, starting with um, probably uh, by sorry uh, left wing governments, starting with Gough Whitlam in 1973, who was a Labor left real left wing Labor government. Um, Prime Minister, he 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 signed the Lima Declaration, which was a dread, dreadful thing, and we, we've suffered ever since. The Lima Declaration uh, agreed, you know, the United Nations put it up, but they agreed that we would ship thirty percent of our manufacturing industry offshore to third world countries. Uh, well, it's now over ninety percent, so it it has destroyed our manufacturing industry. It's cost a lot of jobs, and and it has put jobs in other countries, but you know, I believe in looking after your own country first. And um, so I, I spoke about those things. And then, you know, with, with successive left-wing governments, uh, like uh, Adrian was just saying, you know, the cancel culture, you're not allowed, you know, I mean, we have a thing called 18C, that uh, section 18C, which is the anti-discrimination law, and uh, which is basically taking away your rights to speak about anyone, <coughs> excuse me, uh, anyone or any race of people or any any um, group of people you can be put in jail for without going to court they go through a tribunal so um, this is all wrong this is all uh, against Australian the way of life and and you know I'm fifth generation Australian uh, coming off cattle cattle places and um, you know we always all, all our families always worked hard for our for our living and uh, believed in um, the free enterprise system, the you know capitalist type system, and uh, the rest of it's abhorrent to me. So um, I speak about that, and and the people I speak with, the people I work with all my life, you know, whether it's in cattle yards or in construction or in hotels or whatever, um, the vast majority of them are happy to go to work, provide a living for their family, and have uh, and have a fair go, and um, not want to these these people coming into uh, you know these these people they're now shipping in uh to the country and and seven or eight hundred up to nine hundred thousand a year the the um the government tells the average australians 80 and ninety thousand a year is the immigration quota it's, it's uh, more like um well last year it was nine hundred and eighty thousand uh, eight hundred and ninety thousand i should say people came into our country that are never going to leave um, so they're they're changing our, our the fabric of our society and not for a, not not uh, it's not bettering it. Uh, the Greeks who came in were great. The Italians, the Vietnamese, the Filipinos, all the people who came into our country over the years have helped build our country. They're hardworking people and they've been welcomed and they've integrated really really well because mainly they are Christian type people. Uh, the people coming in now are not integrating. They will never integrate. History has shown us that they'll never integrate and they'll work to destroy our, um, our way of life. So uh, I'm just curious, you know, uh, so according to you, uh, Australia should really restrict the number of immigrants from uh, Islam countries, I understand. So are there any ways that, uh, according to your view, these good Australian values be uh, spread to these Islamic countries, like uh, cultural influences. Are there any ways that you can 
you know, um, influence these people uh, in a good direction? Are there any ways? I, uh, look, you know, I've, I'm sure you have too. I've read the Quran and uh, I've read their belief. You know, if they're good, if they're good Muslims, they're reading their, their, their book like we read a Bible. Um, they're never going to uh, integrate. I think it's, uh, I can't remember the surah, but it says never take an infidel for a friend. Um, how we, uh, like uh, us converting uh, Islam to a, a more Christian way of, of doing things is, I would say, impossible. Um, and history has shown us that since 640, you know, the amount of people who have been uh, countries that have been taken over and, and now are Islamic countries, um, it, it's more the other way around. 1.5 billion people are going to try and convert 5.6 billion people, whatever it happens to be. So I, I can't see any way that that would happen. Um, you know, I, I'd, I'd rather see them convert to Christianity and, uh, you know, turn their back on their, um, their archaic Stone Age uh, way of, of life, you know, covering their women up, uh, stoning them as uh, in the Sharia areas, stoning them or beheading them if they if they dishonor their husband or uh, you know their whole their whole mentality, their whole ethos is 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 barbaric. So, Saint uh, you know, I do, you know, I I study the brain. Uh, I'm a neuroscientist and I have a model of the brain, human brain here. <laughs> and uh, you know, I do believe that uh, people can change. Uh, people do change from to time, time to time. And uh, so I'm just curious, you know, um, <clears throat> looking back on your personal history, were there events that changed you fundamentally? I mean, as you grew up, what were the things that changed you or influenced you? I'm just curious. Uh, influencing uh, was the books I've read, I, I suppose, you know, um, whether it's, uh, you know, I, I read, you know, anthropology and cosmology and... So um, you read a lot of books and what were the books that really made an impact on you? Well, probably, um, well, some of the philosophers, but Ayn Rand was, uh, you know, I, I enjoyed her books, uh, you know, like The Fountainhead and uh, Atlas Shrugged, but particularly Capitalism, The Unknown Ideal. Um, some of the other ones, uh, you know, well, I, I guess Plato and Aristotle, um, you know, I, I really enjoyed um, Einstein, um, and Einstein? and uh, Einstein reading Einstein's because I, I, I like the you know the the cosmology part, but um, really? wow, Stephen Hawking was, was very very deep. I think you know Einstein wrote so much. Uh, he was he's a better author. He's better at uh, explaining to a layman, myself, you know, uh, his views. Whereas Stephen Hawking's was very, very, uh, you know, I, I think I read it three times. I must have absorbed maybe ten percent if I was lucky. But um, uh, no, the 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 political um, books and, and well, you know, philosophy and and politics, you know, coming from. Uh, Ayn Rand, you know, those those sort of things influenced me a lot, uh, especially when I'd read, um, you know, Solzhenitsyn and, and, and how the, the socialism and communism absolutely is, is probably the worst um, uh, political system in the history of man. 74 years from the Bolshevik uprising to the falling of the, of the Berlin Wall. <clears throat> and here we are still in this country, um, espousing the, the socialist doctrine you know I can't it's it's just uh, mind-boggling that uh, Australians and Americans and, and other allies fought the spread of communism in in so many different theaters you know Korea and Vietnam and South America and other places uh, and here we are we're uh, we've got it right you know in our midst so um, it's stunning you know, that uh, it's it's uh, I would never have believed it could have happened 40 or 50 years ago at the same time uh, you know Probably most people of uh, these journalists who criticize you wouldn't uh, know that you are actually an avid reader of Albert Einstein and Stephen Hawking. And you know, I, I was just wondering, you know, you're listening to you, uh, you know, why don't you, I mean, maybe focus on the 
brighter side of you and not really criticize these people who do not agree with you. And the same for Adrian. I mean, I know you very well, right? I know you such a fast, I know you to be a, such a fascinating genius and you're too, uh, really friendly to be with. And, but when people criticize you for being a fascist, maybe they don't know that side of you, right? So, you know, from pure public relations uh, viewpoint, maybe you two <laughs> should be probably be focusing on the better, brighter side of you and those people, and, you know, and rather than attacking these people who have different views from you. How about, how do you feel about this thing, uh, you know? Well, maybe I quickly answer first. Um, yeah. I first. I first experienced this attack, actually before, before even way a long time before I uh, joined the uh, uh, Senatonics party, which was in, you know, 2019. But I did a, keynote speech in in um, uh, in uh, America, USA. Uh, I forgot the city now. Uh, anyway, it's a, 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 in a small town uh, in um, Massachusetts. Um, what was it called? Uh, anyway, uh, and a uh, very small conference, uh, just maybe 50 people. Not, it was like a, you know, very, very small thing. And uh, then uh, totally out of context, uh, they uh, they they uh, took some words I said I, I, unbelievably out of context and thought that I was uh, anti anti homosexual uh, which okay. anti homosexual are, are right? you anti homosexual no, no. I, I, in fact uh, my brother is a homosexual and uh, you know I would have been against my, my brother I mean we don't get on so well but I'm not I'm not uh, you know, against, but you know, I, I believe it's uh, uh, people. What people do in their in their bedroom is, you know, government shouldn't, uh, 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 you know, control. But the point is, I made one comment, uh, and and I'll tell you what the comment was. I said that in 2050, I believe it would be legal to for humans to marry robots. And the example I gave was, uh, marriage laws have changed radically over time. So. In the 60s, no one would imagine uh, in the American South black can marry a white. It was impossible, impossible. But they passed the law black can marry white. Now nobody cares if a black and a white marry. After that, I said in, in, in the 80s when I was a teenager, no one would imagine uh, gay people can get married. Oh, impossible, impossible. But then Supreme Court USA, I think it was 2000 something, said it's legal. So I gave that example saying marriage laws can radically change. Then on Twitter and I don't know what Facebook, they will say, oh, he's comparing robots to gay people. He thinks gay people are, 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 are like robots. It's a ridiculous comparison. And, and, and you see, Moki san either I just shut up and this goes all over the world in, anyway. It's going to go all over the, it was going all over the world saying, you know, Chiok is the uh, anti homosexual, anti gay. Uh, and even if, even I said nothing, it still was blowing up. Then when I replied saying, no, you're totally wrong. It's not what I said. And, 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 then, uh, and th then when I replied on, 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 on Twitter to some graduate student and, and because she was a female graduate student and I dared to reply back saying, I'm not, you know, you got me totally wrong. You totally misunderstand my talk. And then they go, oh, he's harassing a harassing a female PhD student, right? So, so you can see that once the left-wing mob decide you are enemy, doesn't matter what you say, mogi -san, doesn't matter what you say, they only will focus on those parts which they want to, and also, like I said, I, because I replied to a female graduate student, I didn't know she was a female graduate student, I, I, but they, then they say, oh, he's harassing students, right? So, uh, you know, no matter, what my experience is that uh, it doesn't matter once they decide that you are, you know, you should be cancelled. Once they decide that, they will listen to nothing. And, uh, uh, and then, uh, so, so this happens to, to almost everyone. Uh, 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 on the right wing of politics, 
And I'll give you another example. It's Steve Bannon, uh, who uh, you know we, we know, and uh, 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 and actually he's a, he's a he is a very well-read intellectual man. Like like Senator Tanning, he read a lot of books. Uh, if you read his uh, history, uh, and and but uh, but uh, and 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 people have decided that he is like a Nazi, like a fascist, which is not. He's totally not. Uh, he said before, I don't support that Nazi stuff, and you know he's, he's said stuff against it. But again, he he no matter what he says, he's the enemy, uh, uh, and 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 they will attack, they will can't try to cancel him, and he has been cancelled uh, 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 almost everywhere. Uh, so this is the experience of 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 uh, honestly speaking, is very sad because uh, I think you know, uh, um, Mogi-san, when you were growing up and I was growing up. I think we're about the same age. You know, academia was very free speech. Uh, I remember when I was a student in Australia, I mean, we used to say anything, do anything, and, and got do political protests in the streets, you know, throw, uh, throw, throw rotten apples at the, at the police, you know, who were protesting. You know, it was, it was all very free speech. That's totally gone now. It's totally gone. You, there's only one way, and that's the... Uh, you know what? What the left wing has decided is the uh, uh, acceptable thoughts. You know, I think I think academia actually was the first to embrace the cancel culture. I see. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, Sinan, do you have something? Sure. To say? Uh, well, <clears throat> um, regarding the you know the brighter side of life, I'm I'm a, an eternal optimist, um, so I'm I'm not. Uh, I'm not negative. I'm negative on on the things that I know are not good uh, for Australia, or what what I believe is not good for our country and and for our way of life. Um, everything else, uh, um, my wife is annoyed with me because I'm too much of an optimist, and um, you know I always think we're going to make money doing this, or we're going to make money doing that, and a lot of the times we don't. Um, so uh, I, I I see the you know the glass is half full always. You know I'm I'm a uh, even even now, you know, my wife gets really upset. She's very political. She she's uh, uh, you know follows Trump, and she's a conservative, Christian conservative, obviously, and she's really really worried about America and and Australia. So um, you know, I just say, look, you know, we'll get through this. You know, there's worse things have happened on, in the world, and uh, you know, it'll, it'll all be fine. But um, you know, my negative side, I guess, is the things that I see as an absolute uh, clear and present danger to uh, to our society in Australia and to this society here in in America, and those are the the three main threats: socialism, uh, China, and and uh, and Islam. You know, and they they are a threat uh, for for us to think we could ever uh, you know change the Islamic way of thinking after you know uh, whatever it is fourteen hundred years of um, down that path. I I think that's that's a huge obstacle and. Um, I'm happy for them to stay where they are and practice their religion and their and keep their culture, but I don't want them to come into. Uh, you know, I think it's a, a huge threat to us for them to come in here and and um, and historically that's what they do. They they change the culture of the of the nation and uh, uh, you know, not, very few have ever uh, survived it. You know, I mean, uh, look at Great Britain now. Look at uh, Belgium, France. You know. I'm not sure, but um, I, we used to go to London quite a lot in Paris and and tour around those areas. And uh, I wouldn't, I don't want to go back there anymore. You know, that it's a, uh, it's not the same country. It's not the same uh, way of life that it was, you know, years ago. And uh, the same now in Melbourne, in in these in these suburbs where they've taken over, um, you, you you're not welcome there. You and you'll feel that you're not welcome and. Um, I've spoken with so many people during the, the campaigning and, and talking to people when I was a senator and, you know, like a lady who, uh, you know, spent so many years in her home and every afternoon she'd go for a 45 minute walk. Um, she had to sell a home for about a third of, uh, or half its value because they would, they would abuse her on the street. You know, they, they bought up all the homes in her area, built a mosque and then taken over that area. That's not that's not uh, part of our Australian culture, and that's something that um, I, you know I, I don't want to see that happen. I, you know, it's happening now, and we can't do much about it. Funnily enough, um, I, I petitioned.
mentioned, and I had a bill there in, in uh, the Senate to issue uh, 10,000 uh, emergency uh, uh, visas to the South Africans, the South African farmers, I'm not sure if you know, but they're being slaughtered in, in droves now and pretty much with the backing of the government uh, in, in telling people that, you know, you can take this, this land back, the, the, um, the South Africa, the, the Negroes there, and they're, they're doing terribly, terribly barbaric things to these people. I mean, stuff that's shocking. And I had it over my desk every day. And so I, I said, you know, we're, we're giving emergency visas to people who, um, you know, they, they've crossed seven different countries looking for refuge, you know, well, a refuge, if you're looking for refuge, you go to the first country that'll, that'll uh, stop you being slaughtered or give you refuge. And uh, these people are not refugees, you know, they're economic migrants. They're, uh, they come to Australia because our, our welfare system is such a, such a you know, benevolent welfare system. They make so much money coming to Australia. So what I said was, let's in, let's give ten thousand visas to these people. Get them out of this. They're being slaughtered, and um, you know, of course, we, I, I got. I think I was. Um, I think that was one of the votes. I think I had four people on my side, and the rest of the Senate on the other side. Uh, they much rather bring in the people uh, like you, you know your South Sudanese who are barbaric and who are Muslim, because they will vote left wing every time. You know, they because uh, they'll vote for more money, obviously. Um, so you know. Uh, those the, that was a um, that was a, a thing that we could have saved a lot of these people. We still could, and um, instead of that, we bring people in who uh, do exactly the opposite. They attack us in the streets. The South Africans, by the way, are extremely good migrants. They they always get a job. They work hard. Uh, they're Christians, so they would have integrated much better than some of the people we're bringing in. I see. Uh, so. Uh... It's really interesting to hear you too, especially, you know, I have known Adrian for so long and I noticed Senator Adrian, uh, uh, that uh, when you criticize people who do not have your view, I mean, who do not share values with you, you tend to be very colorful in your words. I mean, just like a rap musician, like Kanye West, you know, it's, you go on and on and on and you kind of, you know, make these instant uh, phrases and that's probably why people you know can attack you for being a fascist because you know it's your words are so colorful i mean you're, you're i know oh, you're passionate uh, so, so what full C colorful uh how do you say that um colorful colorful pronunciation colorful so yeah. you know i i can see that uh <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I do. I do still feel that uh, probably uh, a better public relations uh, policy for you might be to just focus on the good values that you believe in. This, mm -hmm. you know, uh, free enterprise, individual dignity, and so on. But and not you know just forget about these people who do not share your values. But that's my own impression. But anyway, uh, you know, I I I think I have got to go. But really nice talking to you. And are you guys still uh, aspiring to do something in Australian? Uh, um, what, or... what I'd just say regarding the, the colourful language, um, uh, oh, yeah. I, I'm not sure if you understood. I, I never at any time wanted to be a politician. Um, oh. I, was, I was asked to be number one uh, after Pauline Hanson in the One Nation Party. I was asked to go number her next on the ticket. And I said to Pauline, I can't, you know, I'm going to America because that's where my family is. And anyway, so she eventually found somebody to go number two on a ticket. So then she called me a few weeks later and said, would you go number three? And I said, well, look, Pauline, you won't even get two people in, let alone three. So she said, I just want to put your name there because I, I guess I was known in Australia, you know, in, in conservative circles. So I said, OK, so put my name there. And um, as it happened, the, the guy, she got two people in the second one, but he was thrown out because he had dual nationality. And that's how I end up in the Senate. So I did say to her, look, if I, if, if I go into the Senate, I'll, I'll you know, say what I always say, you know, and I'll just speak my mind and my beliefs, <coughs> whether they like it or not, you know, and uh, that's how I end up in politics. I, I was never any, uh, I, I never sort of was aspiring to be a politician, you know, at, at that time. Do you you are not planning to run again as senator. Um, I've got a lot of people who want me to go over there and, and run. 
<coughs> run again. But um, uh, with the Australian left wing, uh, with the laws now with uh, Section 18C, the, the anti-discrimination law, they've got a new law now is, is religious discrimination. So they, they would try and attack me on those two things. Uh, they, they, <coughs> the government in, in cahoots with the banks um, pretty much took a lot of my, they took my business, they uh, took money. And uh, you know, they, when you're in a socialist type country, you know, uh, they'll, they'll try and do anything to destroy you. As Adrian says, they'll put tags on you, neo-Nazi, fascist, racist, you name it. I've, I've had all those and I'm none of those, by the way. So, um, you know, but that's what, that's what socialism does. And they use the media uh, to, to promote that so that they hope that the most people, although a lot of Australians now don't believe anything that their mainstream media says, but they use every tool in their, every weapon in their, uh, in their arsenal to try and uh, degrade you, de denigrate you and, and uh, make you into somebody that you're not. How about you, Adrian? Uh, I, would you be running again? Uh, I don't think so for the similar reason is that um, what I realized in 2019 is that uh, a, a couple of things. One is a, one is a kind of systemic issue that uh, Australia has the uh, uh, British um, Westminster system for voting. So like, for example, in Italy, that proportional voting means that if you get, for example, 5% of the vote, you, you'll get 5% of the seats. You know, you get 10% of the vote, you get 10% of the seats. That means... In countries like Italy, the, uh, let's say, minor parties can still get a seat in parliament. But the way it's set up in Australia is, is like England, it's, it, every seat is a winner takes all. So there, there is only one winner for, for each, let's say, area, right? So that means, uh, you know, basically whoever gets eventually 51% of the vote gets in. And so what you have in, the, in this uh, British Westminster system is uh, essentially only the major two parties ever have a chance of, of being elected. So the Australian system is uh, almost impossible for, let's say, upcoming or not, uh, not the uh, major parties to win. I think if I was Italian, uh, if, if uh, you know, uh, Fraser was Italian, we'd probably run again because, you know, yeah. we, I think we could easily get five, more than 5% of the vote, which is the minimum to get seats in the parliament. Um, but in a country like Australia, it's almost impossible. And then there's the other thing is, uh, uh, as Senator Anning was saying, uh, I found the media is ex uh, extremely uh, biased to the left in, in Australia. And we don't have anything like uh, Fox News or, you know, like in America. You know, we don't, we don't have, no, we don't. We don't have anything like that in Australia. So essentially, uh, what I found is that if you find people who are like about, 40 or 50 years old, sometimes you'll get people who say, oh, yeah, yeah I, I agree with what you're saying. But anyone under 30, they're totally almost brainwashed, you know. Uh, 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 it, you know, you could just list off all the things, tick off the things of what, what the left wing believes in, and they believe it because the media is basically drumming this into their head from, from when they're young. Also, the teachers in Australia are very left wing. They, they have a... You, they're all union, not unionized, and those any teachers which don't believe in, you know, very left wing philosophies will will be, you know, basically shifted out. And uh, uh, so the system in Australia, I think, is basically impossible unless you are left wing to to get into the uh, parliament. So I'm just curious, you know, you speak a very Majority of left-wing people, but um, left-wing people also believe in individual freedom and dignity. And so, do you do share some values with the so-called left-wing people? Don't you? I mean, except for probably this infringement on free speech and so on. So, what is your take on left-wing people? I mean, you know, I'm just curious. You do have some values common with the left-wing people, don't you? <laughs> well, no? like, like I was saying, when I, when I was a student, I think, uh, I mean, probably when you were a student too, uh, Mogi san I think universities were a lot more about free speech. So, you know, whether people were left-wing or 
you know, anarchist or anything. There was a fundamental thing about the uh, free speech. And I think the problem when we say left wing now, it is uh, not uh, like, uh, you know, philosophical, like Karl Marx writing his theories. It is more like what happened in, the, in China now, right? Uh, okay. Left wing as in, the, 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 the left wing of today is very much anti freedom and anti free speech. You can see that in China right now, and, and you, you can see that before in USSR. Um, Fraser, Senator Anning? <laughs> um, yeah, well, I, I don't think that um, I hold very many values at all that are uh, similar to the left wing. Um, you know, the way I see socialism, and that is that. Uh, you know, people say, well, every child is entitled to a, an, an education and every person is entitled to, uh, you know, somewhere, uh, a home to live in. But, um, you know, if you add two more words, uh, three more words, you know, at whose expense? Um, I personally don't want to educate somebody else's child. Uh, I'm happy to educate my children, look after my wife and my children, and my family and my, my, you know, grandparents. But, uh, you know, I don't believe everyone's entitled to it. You, you don't get born with that entitlement. I believe that you work for it. You're, you're entitled to the reward for your effort is, is what I believe, you know. So if you go out there and you build your house and you plant your corn and you, you get to live in it and you get to eat it, you don't, you should not be having to give half of it away to somebody who doesn't want to build his own house and plant his own corn. So um, I, I don't. I, I, I don't see the, the value in socialism. I, I mean, I, I don't agree with it. I, I think it's, uh, it's wrong and it can, it's destined to fail because eventually, um, you know, when everyone just sits back and says, somebody else is going to build me a house and somebody else is going to educate my child and somebody else is going to pay for my health care, we'll all sit on the one side. And then, of course, that's where it, uh, it starts to come apart, like we've seen in Venezuela most recently. And uh, you know, well, first, you know, the socialists have got to disarm you because they know that what's coming you're not going to like and they don't want you to be armed. So they'll take your guns away and your ability to protect yourself and your family. Uh, you know, they did that in, in Venezuela in 2012. And by 2016, the Venezuela, the, 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 the people were eating their cats and dogs. And by 2019, they're being shot by their own government. Uh, that's a typical socialist, uh, you know, uh, how socialism evolves. It all sounds great for a start off, like, uh, you know, this, uh, what's his name here in, in America saying, Bernie Sanders saying everything's going to be free and you're going to have, I'm going to give you everything. Well, uh, it sounds great until it, uh, until you're lining up at four in the morning to try and get a loaf of bread at the government store. Um, so I don't, I don't share too many values, I don't think, with the socialists. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, Adrian and Saint Danny, uh, it has been really nice know, to get to know you. And I found uh, Saint Danny, that you to be a fundamentally, uh, you know, a person of good wills. And uh, you know, but uh, I do f still feel that probably you, if you focus on these good things that you believe in, and forget about criticizing these people who do not share your values, maybe your public image would be <laughs> much, much favorable, favorable from- Mogi I, I agree with you, sir. Um, however, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I, I'm not intending to be a public figure. Um, you know, that, that's but never you been- are, you, are already, you are already a public <laughs> figure, aren't you? I, purely unintentionally, I can tell you. But um, yeah, I, I take your point. I, I understand. and. Uh, the only thing is that, that I think that if you moderate, you know, if, if you've got to have to, to, to beat the, the, what I see as our enemy, which is socialism, you know, you have to be a pretty hard line. You, you've got to, you know, you've got to say what you believe. And um, if, I go, if I go soft on it, you know, and a lot of politicians do, I notice that they go in with a, with a, with a strong agenda, a strong uh, view of life. And then they, they moderate it so that they don't lose too many um, constituents or, or people who will vote for them. So, and I, I've never been uh, worried about how many people voted for me. Uh, and what we we're talking about the voting system just quickly. Australia has the most archaic voting system on the planet. We have a piece of paper. They give you a pencil, not even a pen. 
and you put a mark in a square, like, you know, nearly Stone Age stuff. And then they take that into a room and they count all those marks. But the people who are in those rooms are people who are on welfare, a lot of them, and school teachers and all the left wing. And of course, if they don't like you because you're a conservative and you probably won't be voting to give them more money next year, your vote goes in a trash can. And um, that's unfortunately what happened to us. Um, we have we have uh, evidence of it, but you can't you can't complain, I guess. But uh, we had one just quickly one um, candidate in Western Australia who had a very big extent, extended family, and he was one of our candidates who was quite well known. And in his polling booth, where you know we we had a lot of support in that that state, it's a conservative state. Uh, he didn't even get one vote, not even his own vote. So every vote for this guy was was trashed. So that's one of the reasons why um, Adrian and myself would probably never uh, run again in that country because uh, it, the voting system is so corrupt, it's, uh, it's not worth uh, the effort. Okay. So, well, good luck with you uh, with whatever you are going to do. Yeah, I really enjoyed this conversation. So yeah. I hope we can probably get together. And yeah. Adrian, you're going to get Put this on your YouTube channel. Yes. Right. Um, so thank you for your time. I just have I had a question I want to quickly ask you, and this conversation went really really well. So I didn't even. I really uh, enjoyed. It. Thank you very really. much. Yeah. So I just have a quick question before we leave, uh, which is uh, maybe because I'm from a bit of the you know engineering background. What do you think about the technology companies uh, banning Trump from you know Facebook, Twitter, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Uh, what do you think about that? Me? <laughs> both, 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 yeah. Oh. Uh, I, I, I think freedom of speech is a very viable, uh, in, you, know, uh, by, uh, you know, the thing that you should protect. And in this particular case, uh, if it is true that Mr. Trump uh, incited some violence at the US Capitol, uh, if that is true, uh, maybe as an emergency measure, uh, Twitter might be, you know, excused for banning Mr. Trump from Twitter. But uh, personally, I miss Mr. Trump on Twitter. I, I was enjoying his tweets. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, what, what did you take, Mr. Uh, Senator Anning? I, I would say, you know, that's a huge, uh, you know, uh, infringement of the, uh, you know, First Amendment, you know, the right to, for everyone to say whatever they want whether, you, whether people like it or not. I, I take your point, Mogisan, regarding inciting people to violence. I, I read those, uh, I saw those speeches. I didn't feel that he incited people to violence. Um, and it, it has come out um, in all sorts of areas, it, in the social media networks, um, that the people who went in there and who did the, the, who were the leaders and the most damage were actually Antifa people who were, you know, infiltrated deliberately to uh, cause the reaction that we got. So, um, you know, I, 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 I never felt that Trump was inciting me to go and, and get a gun and go and shoot some people, you know, or anyone else. Uh, so I, I think it, it's a terrible thing that um, a lot of the conservative voices have been shut down by the, um, by the social media. Adrian, how, what is your take? What is your opinion? Well, I, I, yes, I also believe this is uh, uh, an example of the ca cancel culture. I, I think that uh, uh, if, for example, if, for example, there were similar words, but from, let's say, a, uh, a, a, let's say a socialist, I, I doubt very much uh, he would be banned. I think in Silicon Valley, it just happens to be, you know, near San Francisco, it's quite a left-wing culture there. So I... I believe no matter what, whether it's left wing or right wing, uh, you know, unless you unless uh, you're literally saying illegal things or you know like uh, kill kill someone or do bad things to children or something, then 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 I think uh, it, it should not they should not have banned Trump. And uh, I believe that this is another example of the uh, you know cancel culture we're seeing, which is it actually is a, a, a started as an academic phenomenon in America. This whole thing about cancel culture, and it's uh, grown like a like a virus um, all, all around the world. 
uh, it's, it's become all, all dominating and all powerful, uh, this kind of can cancel culture. And I believe it's another example of it. Um, so uh, I hope this uh, video won't be canceled on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm, just joking. I'm just joking, sorry. So, so my very, very final question for you, Gary, actually was for uh, Professor Moggy. Uh, do you, I, I, I was in the, uh, America with uh, Senator Tanning last November in America. And uh, I, no matter what, what party you support, there was a huge lot of passion. Uh, and including young people. You'd see young people out there in the streets with the flags, uh, you know, whether it's left or right, there was, there was a huge participation, I felt. And I, and I lived many years in Japan, I never saw that. Do you think that in the young people in Japan, there is a kind of apathy? And do you think there, we there, need... Yeah. There, yeah. Well, yeah, that's a, that's a problem of this country, actually. Uh, yeah. The lack of passion in young people, so... Yeah. Do you think? Uh, do you think we need in Japan more people like Senator Tanning or, or or President Trump who says what they think and and will maybe excite the young people more? Yeah, I mean, you know, as I said, uh, I don't uh, agree with everything. Uh, not necessarily everything uh, that uh, Senator Tanning says, but I do respect you for saying what you do believe in. I mean, so so and uh, I do. Think that to some part uh, you have been a victim of the so-called character assassination. Uh, your words taken out of con uh, context and so on. So, mm -hmm. so that's why. I, and, and so, but um, having said that, um, yeah, I do believe in uh, Japan. We should uh, state our opinions more honestly uh, in the public uh, arena and. Maybe Adrian, uh, you are a professor at uh, Japanese university, so you know you should come to this country more often and instill your passion into the young people. And, and probably so should you, Senator Anning, if you head uh, towards Japan again. Uh, I love I love Japan, yeah, I lo and I love the food and love the people and I love the culture. Uh, so uh, I was only there a short time, but uh, it was uh, it was a, a really good time in my life. Yeah, I'll be back to Japan when the border is open again, Mogi-san, because now it's closed <laughs> to the foreigners because of the coronavirus. Yeah. Yeah. All right. By the way, I, I like your hair, Adrian. <laughs> it, it's it's so sunny here. My hair is kind of frizzy and bleached. <laughs> like uh, it's just so hot. It's like it's like the hottest place on earth uh, in Babinda. <laughs> yeah. Well. Anyway, so thank you very much, uh, thank you. Uh, much uh, Professor Moggy, and thank together. you much, and thank you very much, uh, uh, Senator Anning, for your great talk. Thank you, and I'll and I'll uh, put this on YouTube and send you a link soon. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful night and wonderful day. Thank you so much, thank Professor you, Moggy, and, Senator uh, Anning. Thank you, Moggy son. Thank you, Adrian. Very nice. It was a great, it was great, talk. great talk. Great talk. Thank I you so much. Honor to talk to you both. Yes. Thank you so much. Honor too. Yeah. Thank you.